Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Lackey Listen and Learn Zoo Animals Program. We are so excited to have you here with us tonight. I'm Kelly Swiger, and along with Larissa Moyer and Sheila Scott of LAFQ, Jean Fellows of the Grand Ledge Area District Library, Mariah Martinez of Potter Park Zoo, and Megan Heigl of the Lansing Children's Choir, we will be taking you on a zoo adventure. So a great big thank you to all of those that I just mentioned. It tonight would not be possible without them. So, um, Lack You Listen and Learn is a program that was started to highly encourage listening, learning, and reading on a virtual environment like we are tonight in fun and interactive ways. Every time we have an event, we do something a little bit different with different organizations and libraries and partners um, just to make it a special event for you. Um, some of the other, other things outside of an event that take place with this program are you can you reach out to our YouTube channel to listen to pre-recorded stories. Um, and you can also reach out to our reading phone line to listen to stories there. Um, tonight's program, please use your chat box. We highly encourage it. You can, it's live right now. So feel free to put questions in there. If you wanted to say hello, that's great. Um, there's fun emojis down there too. So feel free to add those um, as you feel, feel like you wanna do throughout the program. And we, we, we would find it great if you can take part in that. Um, stick around until the end of the program where we will be giving away three e-gift cards uh, for Barnes & Noble, but you must be present at the time of the drawing in order for a chance to win. And we will be recording tonight's program. So if you can let me know who is ready to go to the zoo with us tonight, if you can unmute your line and say, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Awesome. Oh. Well, you know what? I am so ready to go with you. And you know what? We have two little friends that want to go with us too. Please help me introduce Laffy the cow and Caroline. Nice to meet you, Laffy and Caroline. Now, please help me welcome the Lansing Children's Choir. Oh, sorry. Thank you so much. Um, on behalf of the Lansing Children's Choir, my name is Megan Heigl. I'm the Artistic Director, and we were so excited to be able to participate. As is with everything, it takes a village. <laughs> and so we're, um, I was blessed and happy that three of our wonderful boys were able to put together our welcome song, which I know many of you may know, called Going to the Zoo. We hope you enjoy making all the animal gestures and can sing along as we start our journey tonight. See the elephants with the long trunk swinging, great big ears and the long trunk swinging. Sniffing up peanuts with the long trunk swinging. We can say all day we're going to the zoo, zoo, zoo. How about you, you, you? You can come to, to, to. We're going to the zoo, zoo, zoo. See all the monkeys scratch, scratch, scratching. Jumping all around and scritch, scritch, scratching. Hanging by the long tail, scritch, scritch, scratching. We can stay all day. We're going to the zoo, zoo, zoo. How about you, you, you? You can come to, to, to. We're going to the zoo, zoo, zoo. Big black bear. Coat's too heavy, he's a huff, huff, puffin. Don't, Don't get near the huff, huff, a puffin. Or you won't stay all day. We're going to the zoo, zoo, zoo. How about you, you, you? You can come to, to, to. We're going to the zoo, zoo, zoo. Little seals honk honk honkin', we can't say 
Oh my God, thank you guys so much. I need everyone to unmute yourselves and say congratulations. Great job. Congratulations. Great job. Great job. Great job. Great job, everyone. All right. Well, up next we have Jean from the Grand Ledge area. Um, yeah, Grand Ledge Area District Library. So take it away, Jean. As you can see, Laffy and Caroline loved it too. I, they love that music. Uh, well, I'm Jean from the Grand Ledge Area District Library, and we're ready for our summer reading program, which is Tales and Tales Animal Adventures, and that's why we're so excited to be here tonight. We have a lot of great animal books at the library, and earlier this spring, we visited Potter Park Zoo to share a few. And well, I guess that's a good time to take a look at what we did. I'm Jean Fellows from the Grand Ledge Area District Library. We're visiting Potter Park Zoo today. We're getting ready for our summer reading program, Tales and Tales Animal Adventures, but today we're here to see the animals at Potter Park Zoo. Let's head inside. On our tour of Potter Park Zoo on this lovely spring day, the weather changed a little bit, and now we're kind of ducked inside to stay out of the rain for a little while. The nice thing about Potter Park Zoo is it does have places where you can get under shelter and still get a chance to see the animals. We're in front of the wolves right now. I am also showing you one of the books from the Grand Nigerian District Library on animals. This is a non-fiction book. That means it's a real true story about the Tasmanian devil. Let's show another one. We saw a lot of birds at the Potter Park Zoo, and you might if you come too. This book about owls is really fun. And this one is about what happens at the zoo at night. Of course, this is a fictional story, and it's a fun story about animals and music. But you know, now that I think about it, there's another book. I think it would work really well for us to relax together and read today. Let's start. Did you like that story? Did you like it? it was fun. We have a lot of great books about animals at the library. But you know, another thing to do while you're at Potter Park Zoo, and you're looking at the animals, you might get a chance to talk with a zookeeper. Let's go and see if we can find one now. All right, that was a wonderful story. Thank you, Miss Jean. Um, next up, I would like to invite you to welcome Mariah Martinez from Potter Park Zoo. Hi everyone, I am Mariah Martinez and I work at Potter Park Zoo as the Community Engagement and Inclusion Specialist. So you will not see me like being with the animals all the time, but I do have a degree, um, so I do know a lot about the animals. Welcome to Potter Park Zoo. My name is Mariah Martinez and I am the zoo's community engagement and inclusion specialist. Today I'm going to talk to you about our rhinos and our river otters. Potter Park Zoo is home to five North American river otters. We have Nikiki and Miles and their three pups. The pups are two females and one male. This is Nikiki and Miles' third litter here at the zoo. The pups are only three months old and are currently off exhibit with their mother Nikiki learning how to swim so that they can come out into the big pool. When otter pups are born, they are fully furred, but it takes about five weeks for them to open their eyes. Shortly after their eyes open, they start playing and learning how to swim. Everything is taught by the mother and the father stays in a different area as they grow. If you visit the zoo anytime soon, definitely look out for Miles as he has the yard to himself. River otters can be found all over North America and are commonly found in the northern areas of Michigan in streams, rivers, and lakes. They spend up to 60% of their time hunting and foraging. Hunting for food happens mostly at night and their long whiskers help them hunt in the dark or murky water. They eat fish, amphibians, and turtles. You may hear otters vocalizing, which is how they communicate. River otter's fur is really unique. It is very thick and helps them keep warm while swimming in cold water. The oil glands in their skin helps keep the fur waterproof. Now let's check out a quick video that our friends at the San Diego Zoo made about our otter Miles. 
overcoming physical challenges is no easy task, but we have met hundreds of hospitalized children from all over the world who have not only overcome their challenges, but have shown us that anything is possible. And today, we're gonna meet someone who has done just that. But this someone isn't who you'd expect. He is quite furry, with long whiskers and webbed feet. Yep, he's an otter, a North American river otter to be specific. His name is Miles. He's from the Potter Park Zoo in Michigan, and he has quite a story to tell. Hi, Carolyn. Hi. Can you tell us about some of the challenges that Miles has faced? Yeah, so Miles was born here at Potter Park Zoo to a first-time mom named Jilly. After he was born, she was a little over-attentive. She over-groomed his left paws and also his tail. So when we found him the next morning, we stepped in. We pulled Miles from mom and actually had to hand raise him at that point. We finished the amputations on the left paws and on his tail. So everything that Miles does, from the way he sits to the way he stands and walks and runs and swims, had to be adapted to his body. How did he cope to overcome those challenges? He's done an excellent job. Um, at about two months old, we brought in two adopted orphan pups named Bonnie and Clyde, and they taught Miles everything there is to know about being an otter. They taught him how to swim and how to run and how to wrestle, play tag, all the things that otters love to do. And they never treated him differently. They never treated him like he was in any way disabled. They just kind of treated him like he was a little extra special. I definitely saw him getting around pretty well. He's fit and healthy. Yeah. Um, and I hear he has a girlfriend now. He does. Her <laughs> name is Nikiki. She came to us about two years ago, and they got along swimmingly. They've even produced a litter of pups. That's right. Miles is now the proud father of two young otter pups. Wow, these pups are gorgeous. So this is the second successful litter here at the Potter Park Zoo? Yes, so Miles was actually the first ever otter pup born at Potter Park Zoo. So we kind of have a double success story here with Miles as the father of our second successful otter litter. <laughs> this otter family could play for hours. Thanks to the help and guidance of his keepers, he got back to doing the things an otter should be doing. Now he's the patriarch of the cutest little otter family in Michigan. Well, Miles has certainly packed a lot into his four years of life. He had a rough start and had to learn how to overcome his injuries. <laughs> but it's all upstream from here. All right, if you enjoyed learning about the otters as much as I did, can you unmute yourself and say cool? Cool. 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 <laughs> and we know you must have lots of questions. So we're gonna ask cool. Ms. Jean if she could um, help us out by asking Mariah some questions. I'll, I'll get it started and then we can take some questions from the kids. Uh, Mariah, I know that kids love the otters, and I know they're going to have a lot of questions. Uh, but can I ask just a couple? Uh, I I know that animals are typically either prey or predator. So what is a river otter? So a river otter is both. Uh, they have a few. Yeah, they have a few natural predators in the water. Um, they have um, very few, but on land they can. Um, they're prey to things like bobcats coyotes, wolves, and black bears. So they're a predator because they do eat small fish and turtles and such, but they're also a prey because of the bigger animals when they're on land. Okay. Uh, what do you feed the river otters? So at the zoo, um, we feed them fish. So herring and capelin, if you know your fish. Uh, they have a carnivore meat diet. So it's just something that you kind of put together. Like you'd have like a dog food diet and things like that. Um, okay. It's lots of different meats. Um, they do get some fruits and vegetables for enrichment and for like a treat. Oh, well, I bet they appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. 
Now, do river otters hibernate? So river otters um, do not hibernate. So hibernation is, if any of the children don't know, is when you kind of go to sleep for a few months, like a bear would. Usually you stuff yourself full with food and then you go to sleep for a few months um, to save your energy. They do not need to do that. So um, they can survive in very cold temps. So even in Michigan, um, when it gets really cold out, they can just live, you know, with the, you know, with the eating the fish and the turtles and stuff like that. And they don't need to hibernate. Wow. Well, I'm wondering if um, any of the kids have any questions that they would like to ask you. I'm not sure I can see them, but I think Kelly is watching. I'm going to see if anyone has put anything in the chat. I'm going to ask you one other quick one. Oh, is there me there? Go ahead. I, I see. In, I see in the chat how long do otters live? Uh -huh. So that's a really good question, and uh, they have a median life expectancy, which is kind of means like average. So if you take all the rhinos, rhinos, oh, I'm already ahead of the game. Uh, <laughs> all the otters, and you take the average of them um, in their lifespan, it's about twelve years. Why was it the first otter born at the zoo? I caught half of that. I think maybe it was when was the first otter born at the zoo? Why was it the first otter born at the zoo? Oh. Why was it the first? Because we just didn't. So that's a really good question. So sometimes we don't have otters at the at the time we didn't have otters at the zoo to um, breed and have pups. And when we did have a couple that could do that, that firstborn was Miles. So um, with uh, and he had another and he had a litter, but um, he had to be separated from them. But um, but Miles is now at the zoo forever because of his challenges and his disability, it'd be really, really stressful for him to move to a different zoo. So he'll be at Potter Park Zoo for um, the rest of his life. And that was in 2013. Um, okay, I see how many things do uh, the otters eat? How many things? So like I said, they just eat like a lot of fish, turtles, crawfish. Um, they like to chew on everything though. So you might see them eating wood and sticks and um, frogs, they actually might find a frog and eat a frog. Um, what would otters be able to survive only on land? The problem with only living on land is the limited resources that they for food. So they really would need a water source to find that fish because their main diet is fish. So and guess what? Guess who does hibernate? Turtles do. So there's a time period where they can't actually find turtles and eat them as much as they would want to. So could they survive? Possibly. It'd just be really hard on them. What are the baby otters' names? So we don't have names yet. Um, we're working on it. So uh, there's a male. So we have Nikiki and Miles are the parents. And then the three pups. So in the video, you saw that we talked about two pups because that video was made when they had the second litter. So this is their third litter of pups. And we have a... Um, one male and two females. It's our first litter with females. So we still don't have names yet. So hopefully look out. I think we're maybe gonna let people, you know, help us figure out the names, but you have to look on our social media and things like that. So no names yet, just call them A, B, and C, I guess. How long do otters eat? They just eat throughout the day. They, they, they like to snack and then they take a nap afterwards. Uh, how old is the otter? So we have Miles is, was just turned eight, Nikiki, um, Ooh, I'm not sure when she was born. I think she was just born. I think they said it like a year after. So I think she's about six or seven. And the otter pups are only, oh goodness, I gotta do math. About four months old, almost. Are the otters twins? Are the otter, yeah, so they're triplets. So there's three of them. So they're all pretty much, they look very similar, but because when they were growing up, they ate a little bit differently. Some are bigger than others, but yes, I'm they are. I'm a twin, are. not a triplet. Yeah, so yes. So all of them are born, um, if there's only two, they're born twins, but they were born um, pretty much identical besides the, um, how big they are, because some eat more than the others. How old is the father? The father is um, eight this year. Good questions, thank you. Well, thank you everyone for the great questions. Let's give Mariah a hand. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for the questions. Thank you. All right. Well, we are going to take a break, but what we need you to do 
is get up and stretch your arms and your legs. And you get to dance with Laffy and Caroline for a few seconds before we talk to you about the next animal at Potter Park Zoo. <laughs> Welcome back from the break. Rhino, did someone say Rhino? We sure did. So get your listening ears ready like Laffy and Caroline and learn all kind of interesting facts about rhinos. Take it away, Mariah. Our three rhinos are Dopsy, Phineas, and Jolly. Dopsy and Phineas are the parents of Jolly, who was born on December 24th, 2019. His name Jolly is Swahili and means powerful. He is almost a year and a half old. When Jolly was first born, he was around 70 pounds and he is now over 900 pounds. Rhino calves stay with their mothers about two years before they go out on their own. Be sure to come see Jolly this summer at Potter Park Zoo. Jolly will be leaving us in the fall to go find his own mate and have his own babies. At Potter Park Zoo, we have three black rhinos. There are only 5,000 black rhinos remaining in the wild and only about 60 at AZA accredited zoos. Black rhinos in the wild can be found in the savannas of Southern Africa. They're best known for their two horns that protrude from their face. Their horns are made of keratin. Keratin is the same material that your fingernails are made of. Although they are called black rhinos, they actually have a gray colored skin. Their skin is super thick, but also sensitive. They roll around in mud, not only for fun, but also as a natural sunscreen and butt protection. Just like you and me, they can get sunburned too. Although they are big in size, they are surprisingly fast runners and can reach speeds of up to 35 miles per hour. Rhinos are herbivores and like to eat leafy plants, branches, and fruit. If you love rhinos, be sure to check out one of my favorite books, Rhino's Great Big Itch. It's about a rhino and a bird trying to figure out how to help the rhino with an itch on his ear. Did you know you can train a rhino? Let's check in with our zookeepers as they do some training with our rhinos, Dopsy and Jolly. training is so cool. Now let's check back in with our friends at San Diego Zoo to learn a little bit more about black rhinos. 
We're here at Potter Park Zoo in Lansing, Michigan with Dopsy, and here are five facts that you need to know about black rhinoceros. Fact number one, unlike white rhinos who enjoy each other's company, black rhinos prefer a more solitary lifestyle. Fact number two, their horns aren't true horns at all. They're made of keratin, which is the same stuff our hair and fingernails are made of. Fact number three, black rhinos have a prehensile hooked upper lip that help them to pull brows off trees. Unlike the white rhinos, they have a flat lip, which is perfect for mowing through grass. Fact number four, there are five species of rhinos and they're all endangered. Black rhinos are the third largest species. Fact number five, black rhinos are born without their horn and that horn grows as they age. Wow, that was amazing. I I learned so much about rhinos just just right there. But you know, I have to say, Mariah, I I never really thought rhinos were cute until I saw Jolly, and he is just so cute. He is. He is. Oh. He's the one. <laughs> wow. Uh, so, I know she talked a little bit about the differences between the black and the white rhinos, um, and and the. All rhino, is it true all rhino species are endangered? Yes, yeah, so there's there's some that are less endangered than others um, when okay. it comes to their population size. So um, all but the greater white, um, greater one horn rhino and white rhino are considered endangered and that's just because they're like vulnerable, let's say. I mean, they're pretty much on the brink, you know, being endangered, but um, there's only 74 um, left of the Haven uh, rhino. The Sumatran rhino only has less than 80. Uh, the black rhino has about 5,000. The greater one horned rhino has is vulnerable because there's about 3,500, so that's 3,500. And but they were on the brink of extinction in the early 1900s with only 200 left. So with um, conservation efforts, we were able to bring them back. But the white rhino, there's a southern white rhino and a northern white rhino. The southern one is doing pretty okay. They've got about 17,000 to 18,000. But the northern only has two females left after the last male died in. Um, his name is Sudan. Um, he died in 2018. Oh my. Yeah. So. Well, how long, um, how long do rhinos live? Yeah. So their average life expectancy is about 19 years, but that, again, that's like the, like the average, um, and it can be up to in zoos, we've seen 30 plus years. So, um, they can live quite a long time with the proper, um, care and protection. The problem is, is a lot of them can't live to their full potential when they're being poached um, in the wild. Yeah. No. The do rhinos ever? I mean, when you see the big horn on the front of them, sometimes you think, well, do rhinos ever use that to fight? Do they ever fight among each other? Yeah. So males uh, often will use that. So if there's two males looking at one female, they might fight with the uh, um, horns. Um, they can fight off other, you know, other, they don't really have any natural predators. They're a very big animal. They're a very scary animal, but something else could try and attack it and they can use that horn for that. Um, and then they use it to teach. So it's just like, you know, she, um, Dops uses it all the time to teach Jolly, you know, what to do with it. And, um, they do spar, it's called sparring when they just kind of like fight with it a little bit. And, uh, but it's very, very pointy. It can be very dangerous. Um, especially yeah. in, in, in there and the pointiness of the horn is is what they want so when you see dopsies it's very pointy because she um, scrapes it to be that way and then phineas's is very short and stubby because he chooses that so we don't actually have any say in how they do that that's all their own oh, oh wow well and now i've learned some more <laughs> yes i i have no idea i i wonder if any of the um any of the kids have some questions about the rhinos um I see that you have some, some questions in the chat box. Were the rhinos around with the dinos? Were the rhinos around with the dinosaurs? Yes. So I believe there was like a um um a relative. I don't believe that they were they go that far back. Was that the triceratops? Because it looks most definitely like a like a rhino. I don't know a lot about dinosaurs, but because of their similarities and how they look, they definitely could have been related and 
evolved, you know, through the years? So that's a really great question. I've never really looked into the, um, if there's a relationship between the dinosaurs and them. Well, probably because the triceratops looks just like it. Just I, agree. Body I, I agree. I agree. Um, we also have, okay, so how old is the rhino? So Dopsy was born um, in 2007. So that puts her at about 14 um, this July. Phineas was also born in 2007. If I'm doing my math right, you guys can correct me. Um, uh, in September, so he'll be 14 in September. And then Jolly was again born in 2019. So he'll be two in December. I heard that you were talking, um, you're taking the baby rhino out of the zoo. Are they really? Also, do rhinos tend to eat animals bigger than them? So first I'll do with the, um, the eat one. Um, rhinos are herbivores, so they don't eat uh, meat at all. Um, their diet is completely, they're that big by just eating um, fruits, vegetables, and, and um, grass, and um, herbaceous plants in the wild. And they'll eat a lot of hay, browse, you could call them a horse. Um, they eat so much hay. But um, they, he is leaving, um, even though he won't be breeding right away when he leaves, there's a big transition. Um, it's really important that he gets to the next zoo. They get, he gets acquainted with his new zookeepers, his, um, his new, um, exhibit. I think it's a whole new exhibit there where he's going, he's actually going to the living desert in California and there's a female coming to be his, um, buddy. So yes, he is leaving, um, a little bit earlier than we thought, just because they need to get, um, he needs to get used to his, um, habitat, his new habitat. What are they poached for? Um, they're horns mostly. So you can, um, in some other countries, they tend to, um, well, which, which is sad because you don't need to really kill them to get their horn. Cause if you take off their horn, it won't hurt them. Like it won't actually physically hurt them, but because a rhino is big and 2000 pounds, they can smush you if you try to go too close to them. So they kill them to cut off the horn and that's it. And then they walk away. So that horn can be worth a lot of money to some um, people or medicine possibly. Um, and unfortunately there's, you know, I always say like at some point they just won't have any horns anyways, that they just keep poaching them. So, um, it's sad, but it's just a way of life sometimes in other countries that they, that they want, they need to make money and, um, that's how they try and do it. But there are a lot of them are usually preserved at this point. So, um, how long are their horns? Again, it can be this big. It can be this big. It's really up to them and how much they want to rub it up against, um, like a tree trunk. Where do they live? Um, Africa. So the, the two rhinos, um, uh, the north and, oh my gosh, the um, white rhino and the black rhino live in Africa. Has somebody got hurt? Nope. Um, we take a lot of precautions. I mean, maybe someone in the, you know, if you meet one in the wild, um, they don't really get scared of people. It's more that they're protective. Like Dopsy is very protective of Jolly and things like that. But nope, we've, um, we take a lot of precautions. We have barriers in between us, but uh we, and we take a lot of steps to make sure that no one gets hurt. Will their horns grow back? Yeah, they actually would keep growing if they did, you know, if they got cut off and they were still alive, they, yes, they'll come back. Um, sometimes we do trim down um, dopsies because when she is with her um, male friend Phineas and they're trying to um, breed, she sometimes can be a little, it's, it's a really sharp horn, guys, like very <laughs> sharp. So we have to sometimes um, just kind of uh, file it down. It's not cold in Africa in the winter, right? How do they cope with the cold weather here? So honestly, they like it. Um, we don't let that. We do leave them inside for most of the winter, but we give them lots of opportunities. If it's like 40, 50 degrees, they'll run out in the snow. They'll have lots of fun. They're not a big fan of the really, really cold, but they have a heated barn that's very large um, that they get to just hang out in. And we do give them choice to come out. Do they stop breathing? Um, nope, they just keep breathing while they're alive. And um, it's, um, if that's what you meant. But they've got those big nostrils, so they breathe pretty heavily. Yeah. I think I got everyone's questions. Wow, those were some great questions, everyone. <laughs> I really learned a lot about rhinos. I never knew that. I always thought if someone broke their horn off that it would hurt. So that's good to know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So everyone, can you unmute yourself and say awesome? Awesome. 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 Well, awesome. You know, I know that we have Laffy and Carolyn are here, and I know they've been to Potter Park Zoo, and I imagine they have a favorite animal too. 
uh, Laffy, are you around? What is your favorite animal? Oh. Looks like Laffy's favorite animal is the camel. Caroline, time for you. What's your favorite animal? My favorite animal at the zoo is a snow leopard because I like how it jumps from rock to rock. That was great. It looked like Laffy and Caroline really, really enjoyed their time at the zoo. And we had a zoo um, animal coloring contest. Um, so we're going to look at that. Um, take a look at it. Take a look at the art right now. <laughs> The public voted, and the winners are... Sadie, Eleanor, and Lillian. Can we all give them a big hand? Thank you. And we also have a gift card giveaway. So we will be giving away three Barnes & Noble gift cards. And the winners are Leanne. Is it Acosta? It's Acosta. Acosta. Shirley yes. Robertson. Shirley Robertson. And Nina. Is it Lyra? Yes, that's correct. <laughs> Can everyone say congratulations? 
Congratulations! Congratulations! <laughs> Congratulations, everyone! Well, thank you. A great big thank you to the Grand Ledge Area District Library, Potter Park Zoo, Lansing Children's Choir, Laffy and Caroline, and all of you. And until next time, have a good night. <laughs>